Hello, I'm Nora Volkov, and I direct the National Institute on Drug Abuse. I'm a psychiatrist uh, by training, and I study the human brain. And I'm trying to understand how drugs affect its function and how ultimately they can help um, account for the changes in behavior that people that are addicted have. And, 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 and when I look at uh, the notion uh, through my career, what is it that I consider probably the most meaningful failure that I've ever had? I have had many failures, um, but I, there's one that, that actually is highlighted to me because of how painful it is. And it's one that uh, resonates in my brain in, in a lot of the things that I do. And it's a long, long memory. And, uh, and it's actually uh, relates to um, something that happened to me when I was uh, five or six years old. I, and I recall we were, I was in Mexico. I was, pro, I was born in Mexico and um, I had three sisters and the four of us were having dinner with my mother. And there was um, a ring that someone rang the bell and my mother went in and there was a telegram. And, and she read the telegram and then she shut the door of the kitchen. And so I just heard her crying and I kept on knocking the door and, and trying to let her open the door so I could console her, um, but, but, but she didn't, she just stayed there. And the, and the next morning I learned that the telegram had basically uh, told her that um, his father had died. And, um, and, and then I didn't need, need, knew more, much about it other than he had died from a cardiovascular accident. And then many years later, I, I actually went to medical school, I went to a residence in psychiatry, and, and from my inception, I have always been interested in studying uh, drugs, and, uh, and, and I was very much uh, committed to identifying knowledge that could change the way that we treat addiction from a criminal behavior to something that could be treated medically. So actually, that would improve outcomes at many levels. And, and so all of my work with brain imaging is targeted to help us understand uh, what, are, um, how, what are those changes. And, I, and my mother was very aware of it, was very, very supportive of my career as a scientist. And then one day when she herself was dying from ovarian cancer, I, I had gone to see her, visit her in Mexico, and she called me in and says, Nora, I need to tell you something I haven't spoken to you about. And she said to me, you know, you need to know that um, my father was an alcoholic and that um, he, the way that he died was he committed suicide. And, and I was shocked and I was shocked because um, my mother knew that my, my work and, and I'm very passionate about it was to actually recognize that addic addiction is not moral failure. And so I ask you, why didn't you tell me, you know, that I am, this is something that I believe very, very strongly. And her response to me was, Nora, I did not want you to think less of him or to lose your respect for him or to love him less. And I see this as a failure because it made me very aware that despite all of the arguments, scientific arguments that I was making in my brain about how the brain changes, I have failed to convey the significance to, to my mother in a way that she would feel comfortable to overcome that stigma link with alcohol on the one hand, but also with suicide. And so I've thought a lot about it because it, in many ways, it is essential in, in one of the challenges that we have as, as scientists and, and also as administrators of scientists. How do you bring science into policy? How do you use science to change the way that, that issues are addressed? And, 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 and that is obviously very relevant for our field in addiction. How do we um, shift from criminalizing to treating? And what it became clear is that in a way I had been listening to my scientific thinking and I had failed to actually understand the emotional issues surrounding the experiences of people. And I think to me, the big lesson is that we need to listen to the voices of people that are suffering to their families 
and, and not come from this space that sometimes is a little bit arrogant in terms of, because we're scientists, we know better. Science gives us an insight where we can manipulate things, but it's a way of recognizing reality. And another way of understanding reality is living through it. So the way that we can maximize our capacity, not just to get knowledge and insight, is of course to use the science, but to listen to those around us that have completely different experience to ours and to understand there are some emotional components to what we are doing that if we do not address, we will not be able to overcome. My mother, mother died and I, and I always think about it and, and I wish I could have been able to help her go through the, the fear, the, the pain, the guilt of not being able to speak about the truth about his own father. The, the, the notion that she was ashamed to tell me that this was going on with her father, it was shame. And I, and I failed, I failed because of my own perceptions of what is to be, should be sufficient to convince someone else that they should do things differently. And now as a scientist, I become much more humble and I realize that science and clarity are crucial. But again, we need to communicate it in ways that are meaningful to those that are suffering from it. And when you do that, you actually have a much greater impact with the scientific findings that you're getting, but it's also extraordinary and enriching. And so now, as I see myself as a director of the National Institute on Drug Abuse, versus where I've been all along to my professional career. I've learned to be very aware of how important it is to engage communities and definitely to engage patients and their family. Thanks very much for giving me this opportunity to share this experience with you. We all have difficult experiences. Some will stay for all with us for all of our life. And to me, this is one of them.